Hey Explorers, Brian here from Phoenix Fire and I have some exciting news about Osiris New Dawn. We have a brand new update that we've been working on for the past six months and I can't wait to show you all the ins and outs about it. So let's get into it. So the first thing we wanted to look at was multiplayer. There's two different sides to the multiplayer system in OSIRIS. We have the data side and we have the syncing side. On the data, it turned out that some of the data wasn't getting written all the way to the server. It turned out it wasn't anything wrong with our code, it was the service that we were using. So we changed to a new service and it's been working really well ever since. On the, on the gameplay syncing side, you know, we just played the game a whole bunch. And we looked at any situation that came up where the syncing wasn't, you know, working as you would expect. Getting in and out of vehicles, um, you know, holding weapons, all the different aspects, you know, the, uh, the creature AI, is that syncing, uh, you know, for other players and everything. So we went through and we just came up with a huge list. We addressed every single one of those things that we found. And I think now the multiplayer is better than it's ever been. So the next thing I want to talk about is just overall gameplay polish. There's a lot in the game that just could have been a little bit better and we just, you know, for whatever reason, didn't have time for it or missed it or whatever the case may be. Um, but after taking some time off from the game and then playing it as a player, there was a lot of stuff that we just thought could be a lot better. So we compiled this huge list and we went through and just iterated a whole bunch. And I think now that the game it just feels more polished, it feels more clean, more smooth. Uh, we even took a look at the traversal of the character in first person and third person, camera, like everything. We just wanted to make cleaner, smoother, more optimized, and just better than it's ever been. So we're excited to get this to you to see what you guys think. Next up is multiplayer spaceship travel. Now, this is a tricky one because we're not only going from planet to planet in a spaceship, we're going up into space, traveling across space to above orbit on the other planet, and then landing down. Um, and then in addition to that, we're also moving the player and any other players that want to be on that ship as passengers, take all their equipment, and then move. Now, because the game is a peer-to-peer -peer multiplayer system, we had to account for all the different situations that might come up. Like for instance, the master client might be driving the, the vehicle or he might get out of the vehicle's you know, a, a pilot seat and then somebody else goes in. So what happens? Who's controlling it and the code and all this kind of stuff. So we had to come up with all the different cases that, that you know, came up. We spent a ton of time on this. Um, uh, basically all winter long, we were just uh, testing the, the multiplayer spaceship travel and just hammering on it. And I think it's now super solid. It's been, it's the best it's ever been. You could now get all your friends into a spaceship. You could travel to that other planet and then you could get off and you build a base and, you know, uh, explore the solar system. So uh, we're really excited about that. It seems like it's holding up really well. <laughs> I hope it continues to hold, but if not, we'll take a look at whatever needs to be fixed and fix it up for you. The next one's been on our list for a long time and it is the queen boss fight. Now, for those of you who have been around for a long time, uh, you might remember that we had the queen very early on, I think in like uh, year one of the game. We, we had this, this character that we put in and she really didn't do anything. She just kind of stood there, she had a couple animations and then creatures came up from the ground and then attacked you. Well, we always wanted to do more uh, and, and so this time, we said, you know what, let's really do this right. And so now with all of the new technologies that we've been putting in the game since then, we were able to add that to the queen. So now the queen has a full behavior system. She could do things like um, roam around the surface of the planet so she's no longer just tied to this one place inside of the dungeons, inside of the mines. Um, and I think the coolest thing that she does is the eggs on her back now could fall off and then they hatch and then all these little larvae come running at you. And I think all of that makes for a great boss fight. It's a lot of fun, it gets really intense. With all the optimizations that we've, did on, we've done on creatures, there's now you know, 20, 30, 40 larvae all coming at you. And, uh, and it, it's, it's been running really smooth and it's, it, it, it creates a really cool boss fight. So we're really happy with it. We hope you are too. 
So the next thing I want to talk about is the map system. Now the map system needs to be accurate and it also needs to be able to show a lot of information and it needs to run fast. For those of you who have been around uh, for a long time, you might remember that we had this like scanner object that had the map on it. And what we were doing back then was we were rendering the entire world through this camera that was way above the character and then putting that as a render texture on to this object that you were holding. Well, the reason we put it on that object and not on the screen is because since we were rendering the whole world, it was a huge frame hit. It was like 20, 30 frames a second. So we put it on, on, the, uh, uh, on that item so that it wouldn't kill the frame rate all the time. Well, we needed to come up with a way to show that level of detail, plus all the different improvements that we've done to the map and compass system since the early days. Like being able to see all the different minerals, being able to see gas, uh, all, your, all your base equipment and everything like that. We wanted to be able to show all of that in the map and show it very clearly and make the map truly useful. So we came up with a hybrid approach. Where, where now we are drawing the whole world, but we're doing it in a way that is a lot less expensive than we used to, yet also showing all the data and information that you need so you can find the minerals that you need on your adventure. So beyond these features, if you wanna see the full change list, I'll put a link in the comments below. And beyond that, I just wanna take a moment and thank you guys for sticking with us and supporting us all the way through our early access journey and where we are now. This game wouldn't be where it is if it wasn't for you. And for that, myself and the Phoenix Fire team are eternally grateful. So thank you so much. We hope to see you out there and I hope that you enjoy this update.